This week on Westford Cat News, annual town meeting ended on Saturday with some unexpected outcomes. Um, a moment ago, Madam Moderator, you called for a vote of yeas and nays, which I believe we all just took. I don't know that we introduced any other new business since the gentleman at the microphone offered his resolution. Selectmen voted to temporarily open Patton Road to two-way traffic at all hours of the day. Uh, if we started it, you know, now or, you know, shortly, whatever, I, I would like to have you folks report back to us at the end of the school year. And we bring you another in our After the Bell series. Stay with us. Your local news is next. Welcome to Westford Cat News. I'm Nancy Burns, a Westford Cat board member. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you to sign up for our email alerts to get our latest Westford News articles. Just visit westfordcatnews.org and click on the red subscribe button in the upper right corner. Do you have a local issue that you feel passionate about? Our news director, Joyce Polino Crane, would like to work with you in the details and collaborate on telling your story. Email jcrane at westfordcat.org to team up. In the end, many of the controversial issues that were so consuming prior to annual town meeting on March 23rd were dismissed. A dramatic climax came when the device of Article 16 was up for discussion after the lunch break. The citizens' petition, filed by residents Tom Barry and Chris Nussbaum, asked voters to amend an agricultural preservation restriction on a nine-acre Boston Road parcel to allow the construction of a restaurant there. In the late 1990s, the town paid the landowner $525,000 for the development rights, the right of first refusal, and the guarantee of its perpetual preservation as agricultural land. A group of residents who were opposed to developing the land encouraged voters to deny the petition. But before the debate began, resident Bob Carter stepped up to the microphone and moved to dismiss the article. Former selectman Don Siriani was right behind him. I'd like to make a motion to dismiss Article 16 and 17. So, Madam Moderator, um, there was a citizen who came to the microphone and attempted to put a proposal to you to have a secret ballot. It, it, at that time, you didn't accept it because you hadn't even introduced this item to town meeting on the floor. Once you had, the gentleman near me made a motion to dismiss two questions, two of the articles, which was seconded. So that has precedent, and I believe, and Madam Moderator, point of uh, parliamentary inquiry, is that a debatable motion? It is not. Okay, so you're going to allow that motion. I will allow that motion after I've made my statement. And it is debatable. And it is debatable. Are you debating it, Madam Moderator? Or, like, why is there a statement necessary? It's been introduced and a motion has been Because I'm made. the moderator and, and I'm trying to keep order and give you guidelines and guidance. Yeah. It's not debatable. I understood that. Okay. So I'm Don Suriani, Graniteville Road. I seconded the motion that was made by the gentleman to, um, with, to, to dismiss the two articles which is uh, my understanding, I think you've affirmed, is not debatable. So I think the next order of business is to call that question. Okay, so now we'll vote, a motion, vote the motion to dismiss. It's a majority vote. Yes. For 16. No, it's Only 16. Um, a moment ago, Madam Moderator, you called for a vote of yeas and nays, which I believe we all just took. I don't know that we introduced any other new business since the gentleman at the microphone offered his resolution. Can you please tell the town meeting what that vote we just took was? Because it was voted in the affirmative. So what, are we, what business are we doing now? No, 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 we just took another vote a moment ago. 
after that. We have a tradition in Westford to allow a non-binding resolution. Yes. And didn't and you call, and Madam Moderator, did you not call a vote on that resolution? In all, there were 25 articles to be decided, including six citizens' petitions. One petition filed by resident John McLaughlin failed 238 to 228 in changing Chapter 58.3 of the town's bylaws. McLaughlin, who lives on Village View Road, wanted selectmen to withdraw the permission to drink alcohol in the parking area of the VFW ball field, which had been granted to the Over 30 Softball League in 2014. McLaughlin said the ball players are loud and disturb the quiet peacefulness of the night. Here's McLaughlin's neighbor, Ken Wilmer, who took on the role of spokesman to represent McLaughlin and his neighbors. What is the law in Massachusetts? Can you drink in public in Massachusetts? If you're like me, you thought the answer was no. But, surprise, the answer is it all depends upon where you are. There is no state law that regulates public consumption of alcohol. It's left up to the individual cities and towns. So what is the law, current bylaw in Westford? Westford treats drinking on public and private properties the same way. If you have permission for who, from whoever owns or controls that property, you can drink on that property. Resident Julie Mount's petition would have imposed a penalty on anyone violating a bylaw or regulation. The petition was so unenforceable that Town Council John Giorgio said this. State law does not permit non-criminal disposition for the violation of a contract. In fact, there's a constitutional provision that prohibits the impairment of existing contracts. So if you went ahead and approved this bylaw today, it has to go to the Attorney General, as Attorney Corbo said, mm -hmm. and in all likelihood, as close to being as certain of anything in life as I can be, the Attorney General is going to disapprove this bylaw because the sole standard for the Attorney General is, is it inconsistent with state law? And I very much expect she will find that it is. So we can spend a long time debating this, but you've had two attorneys from KP Law tell you today that this bylaw is inconsistent with state law, if you approve it, it's gonna cause a lot of additional legal work for something that is not going to be approved. And so it's my strong recommendation that you not pass this bylaw um, today, or ever for that matter. The last articles in the warrant involved the proposed renaming of Stony Brook School to the Everett V. Olson Jr. Middle School at Stony Brook. The naming committee sought to bestow the honor on Olson right away. But others, including the school committee, wanted to wait until his retirement. A motion to dismiss the article put an end to all debate because the motion succeeded 118 to 115. Motion to dismiss, yes, 118. Motion to dismiss, no, 115. So the motion to dismiss passes by the majority vote. When town meeting broke for lunch, Permanent Town Building Committee Chairman Tom Ahanna and former Permanent Town Building Committee member Tom Ellis were awarded the Gordon B. Seavey Appreciation Award for their dedication to the school department. Here's Superintendent Everett Olson. As many of you know, uh, Gordon Seavey was uh, a distinguished member of the uh, journalistic community. Uh, publishing the Belmont Citizen for many years was a certainly a very distinguished resident of the town of Westford. And he had a great, great passion for providing assistance to the Westford Public Schools. And uh, prior to his passing in uh, 1996, at the age of 91, wanted an award established for those who provided extraordinary service on behalf of the Western Public Schools. And so every year since then, we have awarded the Gordon, Gordon CV Award, sometimes to an individual, sometimes to an organization or a group of individuals or a committee. It is with great pleasure that I present to you uh, two recipients of the 2019 Gordon CV Award, Mr. Thomas Mahana and Mr. Thomas Ellis. 
Uh, our regional community, uh, committee charge, though, did not include involvement in, uh, in school projects. But when the, the elevator project at this school was facing some challenges, we were asked to step in and, and assist Bill and Kathy Ops with completing the project. And that was a big change for the school department. And we really appreciated uh, how much they were open to our involvement, and, uh, it, which has now led to a great relationship, which is the collaboration on three MSBA projects, including the window replacements at the day at Robinson and the roof replacement we completed this past summer at the, uh, the Abbott School. Tom spearheaded the MSBA you know, initiative and all three projects were fortunate to receive over 40% reimbursement from the state, you know, saving the town several million, million dollars. And I feel honored to have been able to do that. I'm a blowing, you know, in town, you know, I'm not, we've only been here 25 years. But it was about 20 years ago that I got involved with the permanent school building committee. And, you know, there's George and Angela here and others who participated that. And I remember George saying, you know, you really don't understand what the word permanent means in terms of the permanent school building committee. You know, I feel honored to have been worked, you know, I came in at the end of the academy. We we did Miller, we did um, um, uh, Chris Afouli, we did Stony Brook, um, and set the tone for what this community is all about, good schools. And um, in my day job, I do project management and we're involved with many communities across the state uh, doing this. And I think this community should be really glad of the forethought that you and, and the town fathers and mothers, if you want to call have had um, to put us where we are. I mean, w w we did all those schools for a fraction of what the communities are now spending. Watch the entire town meeting on demand at westfordcat.org. At annual town meeting, town manager Jody Ross's balanced municipal budget for fiscal 2020 of $117,945,274 was approved by voters. The amount represents a 2.86% increase over last fiscal year's budget. The fiscal year begins July 1st. Here's Ross. This year, there's a lot of talk about the budget. We get a, a, an amount of new revenue every year. This year, it was a little over $4 million. Then we have to take out the stuff that we really can't flex on too much, like benefits and insurance, debt service. We had the teacher's override and the Neshoba Tech um, assessment, which did go up significantly this year. And then we have what's left, and that's what we split up. So this year, at the end of all that, I split the uh, remaining funds about approximately 60 40 with the schools so it's just important to understand all that that's all we get that's new and then I have to um, share it in a way that we seem we feel is fair we like to show this slide I show it every year you're probably sick of seeing it but we are presenting to you a balanced budget which is different than a lot of other entities uh, we do follow the selectman policy directive which has had a focus on public safety the last couple of years we maintained our triple-a rating thank you to all our finance people that work for the town and department heads and again back in I was started in 08 and we relied heavily on reserves we brought that down during very difficult economic times and we've had basically a balanced budget for the last five years six years and we would like to keep it that way so Ross also gave an overview of the growth taking place in town as part of her state of the town address Residential development, this is a big deal for our town right now. As a matter of fact, there's about 640 units of residential development underway. And they're single family homes, mill redevelopment. I've got a few of them here. And this is all available online too. We've got 40 Bs under construction, Alder Point, Sugar Maple Lane. We have 40 Bs of apartments down on Robbins Road and also Concord Road. There's 480 apartments planned in those two areas. One was supposed to open in June. I'm not sure whether that's gonna happen or not. There's some issues and one January of 2020. So our current subsidized housing index is 13.75%. That protects us from having to allow another 40 B into our town, at least for a while. <laughs> this is keeping our permitting and land use department very busy. So in the permitting process here, we have Spalding Hill Estates, 
We have um, a couple of developments on Carlisle Road and one on 60 Littleton Road. So commercial, there's some going on in commercial, not as much as residential, but there's a small business innovation center being constructed. Orchard Square, they finally got a restaurant, a craft beer restaurant. I'm not sure exactly when it's opening, but that's great. Kickboxing, um, and there is space available. UTC Aerospace is expanding. They're continuing that. Juniper Networks just completed a big renovation. Unfortunately, we learned that Puma is leaving Westford in 2021 and Selectman Clay and I went and discussed that with them and primarily it's because they employ millennials and they all live in Boston and they don't really want to continue to commute out here and they have another facility in Boston so they're consolidating. Watch the entire town meeting on demand at westfordcat.org. Here's Westford Cat News Director Joyce Polino Crane with a highlight from the school committee. Brian Rourke K-12 Wellness Curriculum Coordinator presented on March 26th the results of the 2018 Emerson Hospital Youth Risk Survey. Here he is discussing sleep patterns for students. Um, sleep obviously um, is, is something which the district is trying to take a look at and, and trying to make sure that we're doing right by our students and doing the best thing for our students. And again, these are the median numbers that are there. Um, the CDC and Challenge Success recommend that uh, students 6 to 12 years of age get 9 to 12 hours of sleep and also that teens 8th grade and above uh, get 8 to 10 hours of sleep per 24 hours and again this is in the CDC and in line with the Challenge Success Survey which was addressed in 2016 as well. So what I can show you as we go further um, to this slide is this breaks a little down by, I broke it down by grade on the right, but I also broke it down by trends on the left, okay? Um, on the right hand side, I'll just start at the top, high school, 87% of our students are sleeping an average of seven or few hours each school night. 90% of our students are sleeping an average of seven or a few hours each school night at the senior level. Um, it peaks in 11th grade, when 93% of our students are sleeping an average of seven or few hours each school night. And as we work our way down into the lower grades, um, the amount of time where students are sleeping increases. In other news, gridlock around Westford Academy every morning prompted Principal James Antonelli to team up with town engineer Paul Sterrett for ways to improve traffic flow and safety. On March 26, selectmen voted unanimously to allow passage on Patton Road at any time of day. Presently, the road is off limits in the morning and early afternoon. Here's Antonelli responding to a question posed by Lauren Schweitzer of 11 Patton Road. We had a variety of accidents in the uh, parking lot for faculty vehicles, and then we had you know, pa uh, parents just cutting through, and it became very, very dangerous. So we attempted this. So I, I just want to say one thing that I understand, we understand as an administration that we can look at all kinds of new ways, but this is another way that we're trying to exhaust. This has to be a coordinated review with Chip Barrett, with Paul, with the Westwood Police Department, with the administration. It's all hands on deck. This is a problem and it's an accident waiting to happen, so we're just trying to find different ways to, to come up with the best solution to get people in and out of Westford Academy. This may not be the best way and we may go back and say that's not the, the right move. I'll accept that. But if we don't try something, we're not going to figure out a remedy for a major problem. People want to get to work. People want to drop off with their kids. I'm trying to do the best I can. And I'm putting three of my deans in the road every single day. Watch the entire Selectman's meeting on demand at westfordcat.org. Town manager Jody Ross has been busy planning for this season's farmer's market. On March 27th, she was with Highway Supervisor Chip Barrett, Director of Parks and Recreation Jim Duane, and GIS Coordinator Chris Coutu as they plotted things out for the weekly event. Hi, I'm Jody Ross here for your weekly update. And now that town meeting is over and, and what a town meeting it was, we, we did a lot of town work and we got a budget pass, which I'm very 
very happy for. But now that town meeting's over, we're focusing on spring and upcoming summer. And one of the things that I mentioned at town meeting is that we, the town has taken over the farmer's market. We're very excited that we've had plenty of applications. The farmer's market's going to be run from July 9th through August 26th on Tuesdays from 2.30 to 6.30. But I'm here with a few of our town department heads planning the event. So Chris Kutu, our GIS uh, administrator, created some maps for us of the common. And with Chip Barrett, our highway superintendent, and Jim Duane, our recreation director, our parks grounds and recreation and cemetery director, he has the longest title in town, we're trying to lay out the different vendors. So maybe I'll let them share with you a little bit about the work we're doing here today. Thank you, Jody. Happy spring to everybody. As we transition from winter into spring and summer, one of the things on our palette right here is putting together a farmer's market. This year, the town is taking over the farmer's market, and it will be run by different department heads. Um, different departments will, um, will manage the uh, operations of the uh, Tuesday farmer's market, starting with the highway and parks and grounds. We're going to share the first two weekends uh, working, uh, two, first two weeks working together. And um, with that, it takes a little bit of planning. Um, uh, it's been a very successful um, farmer's market, and we're taking from what we learned from the past, putting it towards a, a new exciting year. Um, I just think it's a great opportunity for the town of Westford. It's exciting. I know for Parks and Recreation, spring comes and really our operations kick into high gear. People are looking to get outside, opportunities to get a little bit of exercise, enjoy something fun to eat. And uh, with Parks and Rec now being located at 65 Main Street in the Rodenbush building, we really feel um, much more a part of the overall operations for the town and an opportunity to contribute and participate in an event like this that does get people outdoors and does bring something great to the residents is fantastic. And now uh, we're looking forward to it. Can't wait. And I'll hand it off to Chris Kutu. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm the GIS coordinator for the town. I do all the mapping and, and layout for different events and um, special um, things that go on in town and all the other mapping that goes on. But um, we're going to be looking at parking, how many parking spaces available. We have some more parking available this year in the um, center fire station. We have um, all the fire parking, uh, fire department parking spaces have opened up in this area. So um, it's going to be a little bit more comfortable for people to pull in and park in a, a parking lot environment for the farmer's market. We're going, we have some more um, crosswalks and accessibility um, downtown. We've added crosswalks here um, and made some handicap accessibility improvements on all three corners of the, the common. Um, those will be mapped out and um, generally to make it a little bit more organized and accessible for everyone. So when you come down, it's going to be a little bit more comfortable for you to um, <clears throat> move around, um, get in and get out um, type of thing. I really hope that everybody comes to the market this year. We're doing some things a little differently. We're going to have more prepared foods. We will have Bubba's Barbecue and the Kebab Man, who's been there before, Aviva Trattoria. We'll have a booth and Kimball Farm, so we'll be selling ice cream. We're going to have some exercise demos like Pilates, yoga, pure bar, and kickboxing. And we even are hopeful to have some pony rides. And of course, the alpaca lady will be back. So there's a lot of exciting things going to be happening at this farm mar farmer's market. And we look forward to seeing you there this summer. So thank you very much. Until next time. This week, we take a closer look at Westford Academy's Bally Hop Dance Club in our After the Bell series, highlighting clubs and activities at the high school. Here's WA senior Morgan Frood with advisor Lauren Coffey, a health and wellness teacher at WA, and members of the club. I'm here with club advisor Ms. Coffey. How long has this club been in existence? I have been the club's advisor for, since its inception about eight or nine years ago. I usually have about 10 students a year that participate regularly. That's awesome. And how long has it always been Bali Hop or have you gone through different forms? We started out with more classical dances, um, more Bollywood, the movies and all, and we've had an influx of students from different cultures and they're bringing the hip hop with them. And so we transitioned to Bali Hop this year. Oh, that's awesome. And what does a normal Bali Hop club meeting look like? Um, 
We usually meet in room 105 where uh, we have the mirrors so the kids can pick out where they're going to stand. They do a lot of their own choreography, um, so it's a lot of time spent teaching each other dance moves, figuring out what needs to go next in the dances, um, and they work from September through March on a program. To see more WA Featured Clubs, visit Westford Cat's YouTube page and search for After the Bell. Longer days, beautiful sunsets, it's almost time to shed our winter coats. Let's see what weather.com is forecasting as we head into the weekend. Here's Westford Cat Board member Betsy Alvarez with suggestions for things to do in the area. Thanks, Nancy. The J.B. Fletcher Librarians will honor National Poetry Month with a concert of poems set to music by the musical trio Classic Gals. The hour-long event will take place Thursday, April 4th at 7 p.m. at the library. The group consists of singers Beth Fowler of Rye, New Hampshire, and Jean Masterman of Westford, accompanied by pianist Rachel Mueller of Westford. Hear poems by Robert Frost, Emily Dickinson, and Robert Browning. Admission is free. This performance is for ages 14 and up. Register at westfordlibrary.org or call information services at 978-399-2304. The Love Dogs are coming to the Parish Center for the Arts on Saturday, April 13. Doors open at 7 p.m. and the music starts at 8. Combine a mind-blowing horn section with a barrel house boogie-woogie piano and a guitar for a foot-stomping dance, hoping evening of freestyle and swing dancing. This show sells out. Purchase tickets at westford.org slash PCA. Members pay $25 and non-members pay $27. The Cameron Senior Center will show the movie Coco for young and old on April 16 from 2 to 4.30 p.m. Admission is free, but participants are asked to register on the Roddenbush Community Center website at roddenbush.org. This is Betsy Alvarez, a Westford Cat Board member. Back to you, Nancy. That's it for now, Westford. We leave you with images and scenes from annual town meeting.